Hello, my name is Sushima and this is Homeopathy Nook for Wednesday, November 1st, 2023. We are now live and we're going to talk about the very same book, Kopi Kerr's Experiences of 70 Years in Clinical Practice and his description and his um, tribute to the old masters. And the first one, or one of the ones he talks about is Boninghausen and how meticulous, how precise Boninghausen was in coming up with his analysis of the different remedies, the different pathologies, and so on. Well, he says, Boninghausen had a large case, had large case record books, each volume covering a particular period, say six months. Do you know what he decided to do? For a period of five years, he gave to every patient only the 30th, 30C or lower. The next 10 volumes shows prescriptions of only the 200th, 200C in every case of men, women, and animals. Boninghausen was a lawyer by trade and a lord, a German royalty, and he was cured of some a dreadful disease by Hahnemann, and he was let, he was supposed to be dying from it. He recovered, and he decided to give up his life to homeopathy, to the learning of homeopathy, to the dis dissemination of homeopathy. And um, he was possibly one of Hahnemann's greatest students. Because he was a lawyer, he was a very precise guy, and he kept very, very good records, and he had very good success. So anyhow, he took a bunch of patients for several years um, and gave every patient only 30 Cs. And then he gave every patient in his practice only 200 Cs. Men, women, children, animals, everybody. Only after a prolonged success and better results with the 200 or above did he affirm that the 200 were better than the 30th. Mind you, this is Kopikar saying, no condemning the lower ones. They had also worked and they had their uses. But this is a tribute to Boninghausen. And if a remedy is right, correctly chosen, then giving it in a higher potency will generally give you excellent results and better results. Kopiger says, there used to be a remark by our opponents that homeopathy was only faith cure. It was said 250 years ago, it was said 200 years ago, it was said 100 years ago, and it is said today. And yet, 400 million people in India, and possibly a billion people worldwide, use homeopathy for everything from colds and coughs and flus and eczemas to cancer. The Banerjee, Banerjees have had stunning success with 20,000 documented cases of cancer in which they've had, I believe, a 22% cure rate, about 22% stability, and a very small number of, a relatively small number of failures as compared with the techniques we're using today in mainstream medicine to cure cancer. Boninghausen discovered many specifics on the lines of his master, Hahnemann. His Aconite 200, Spongia 200, and Haparsolf 200 for croup was but one. So if you have croup, you can shut your eyes and your mind and give starting out with powders of Aconite for the early stages, for that raspy cough like a saw on wood, Spongia, and as it becomes more productive, Haparsolf, in succession, you will cure the croup without fatality, without a problem. Um, and many greater homeopaths have tried curing the croup with the best well-indicated remedy. They failed, and they came to Boninghausen's formula of the croup powders, Aconite, Spongia, and Hapar, 200 each, given in succession. Homeopaths have used Thuya as a remedy for smallpox. We don't get smallpox, but we have a lot of very pox-like diseases today, as well as vaccinosis. And this post is probably going to get taken out because I use that word, but jabosis or 
or poxosis, I will call it, the thing that was given to you in 1920-21, or excuse me, 21-22, a remedy for the side effects of that, where your heart shuts down, you fall down if you're an athlete, um, Gian Bray, transverse myelitis, and so on. Thuya is your remedy. But very few seem to know who discovered this and how. Well, it was Boninghausen. So we should actually pay tribute to Boninghausen. I cannot tell you how many uh, cases I've seen where warts were cured with Thuya, where um, the side effects of some of these terrible, terrible um, atrocities we're committing on people were healed with Thuya, um, as was smallpox, as are diseases which have the kind of pox that we're talking about. See his beautiful deductions, he explains. The observations repeatedly made that during such epidemics of smallpox, malanders are frequently observed in horses. Malanders is Greece, it's a disease of horses brought me to compare with the symptoms of small. So he was a polymath, guys. He observed animals, he observed epidemics, he observed symptoms of people in epidemics, he observed simultaneously what was going on in the animal world, plant world, and so on. And he deduced things, and he used this combination of incredible science and deep intuition and art to come up with the right remedy, which we now get to use. So he observed during such epidemics of smallpox, malanders are frequently observed in horses. And that brought him to compare with the symptoms of smallpox, the specifics for this disease in animals. And so he used it in animals, too, yeah. And the result proved so decidedly favorable that I used the same in the first case with smallpox. He was successful with Thuya in the malanders of horses, and when he was, he decided to use it in a case of smallpox that was entrusted to my treatment. It exceeded all my expectations. On the fourth day, the pustules were all dried up. On the eighth day, they had fallen off and no pock marks were to be seen. That, folks, is the magic of Thuya. As I have hardly used anything for five years but high potencies, Boninghausen, quote from Boninghausen, and with such good results that I should probably never again return to the low potencies. I also used in smallpox cases only the 200th potency of Thuya, giving a few pellets as a dose every other evening. And I will leave you with that thought on Bonninghausen, on Thuya, Melanders, smallpox, uh, the croup remedy, aconite, spongia, hapar, and how he came to the conclusion that the 200s worked better for him, at any rate, than the 30th. He was a superior homeopath and a superior prescriber and repertorizer, so it may not work for folks who don't have that kind of experience, but for someone who has done their job of repertorizing a remedy for a person, that was Boninghausen's conclusion. And that is where today we're paying homage to an old master, but also this old master who is Shankar P. Kopikar. It's probably the longest living Indian homeopath who died in the recent past. Um, it's a tribute to him and his incredible work, his books, and his knowledge. And I'll bid you adieu for tonight. I'll see you soon at Homeopathy Nook again.